Hello and welcome to Marketing91.com. By definition, supply of money is the total stock of domestic means of payment owned by the public, private individuals and business firms in a country. Money includes only the stock of money in hand in a spendable form at any time. Money supply is stock at a point in time but it is a flow over a period. Money flow comprises a given stock of money multiplied by the velocity of its circulation. Velocity of money circulation is the number of times a unit of money is circulated in a given period or year. Money supply equals M into V as a flow concept where M denotes money stock and V denotes velocity of circulation. For example, if M is rupees 5000 and the value of V is 5, the money supply as a flow concept equals 5000 into 5 which is rupees 25000. There are two types of money supply, traditional measure and modern measure. Traditional measures include currency, that is coins and notes, and demand deposits. Modern measures include currency, coins and notes, demand deposits, saving deposits in post office, time deposits, government securities and credit. The traditional measure is termed narrow money because the components of money supply are restricted to currency and demand deposits. It is also called transaction measure or transaction money because it includes the terms actually used for transactions. It can be expressed as M1 equals C plus DD where M1 denotes traditional or narrow money, C denotes currency, coins and notes and DD denotes demand deposits. The measure M1 is very close to RBI's concept of M1 which is M1 equals C plus DD plus OD, where OD denotes other deposits. Because they are negligible, other deposits are ignored for all practical purposes. Modern money is also termed broad money because it brings in those items that are not rather liquid but are nonetheless available as a transaction settling medium. It consists of M1 and other liquid assets on near money. The items included in the list of liquid assets are saving deposits with limits on the amount and number of withdrawals. Saving deposits include Post office saving bank deposit Time deposits with banks which can be withdrawn by notice and incurring a penalty interest Government securities, bonds and other financial assets Credit which is all debt of domestic non-financial sectors in the form of mortgages, bonds and similar instruments. It can be expressed as M2 equals M1 plus A plus B plus C plus D, where M2 denotes modern measure or broad money. The items included in M2 differ in terms of liquidity as it declines from A to D. Broad money can be subdivided into M2, M3 and M4. M2 equals M1 plus A plus B, M3 equals M2 plus C and M4 equals M3 plus D. Monetary authorities of each country decide the items to be included based on their impact on economic activities. Money supply does not include cash balances held by the central and state governments because such money is not in circulation, time deposits held by the public with commercial banks because the associated money can be withdrawn only after maturity, overdrafts until used by concerned individuals, Monetary gold held in reserve by the central bank because it is not circulated in the economy and cash balances held by the central bank and by commercial banks as reserves to support demand deposits. Determinants of money supply are both exogenous as well as endogenous, high powered or reserve money, money multiplier and other factors. Let's understand each of these in detail. High powered money H also denoted as M0 by RBI or reserve money is the base of money supply hence it is also called base money. It comprises cash deposits with the public C, cash reserves of banks R and other deposits OD with the reserve bank that is H equals C plus R plus OD. It is different from M1 in terms of the second component as M1 equals C plus DD plus OD. DDs are held and created by commercial banks. By contrast, all components of H are created by the monetary authority. R is the base on which DD expansion depends. Hence, R imparts to H the quality of high power, 
qualifying it to be termed high powered money. Moving on to money multiplier. The value of money multiplier is determined by three factors. Currency deposit ratio or K, reserve ratio R and other factors. The first factor is currency deposit ratio. High powered money H is sought by the public as currency C and by banks as reserve R. Greater the amount of cash demanded, lower is the availability with banks and thus lower is the amount of credit creation. The ratio of the public's preference for currency to their preference for demand deposits is called currency deposit ratio. It depends on the banking habits of people, income levels, interest rate, etc. The next factor is the reserve ratio. Reserve ratio is the total amount of money received by a bank is its reserve money. It can be divided into two types. Required reserves or RR that are reserves commercial banks are statutorily required to hold with the central bank. Reduction in RR allows banks to create greater amounts of credit. The next type is excess reserves or ER. This refers to reserves required by banks to meet their currency drain, net cash withdrawal by depositors and clearing drain, cash required to meet the cross clearing of checks among banks. These reserves are held voluntarily by banks. Reserve ratio determines the volume of credit that can be created by commercial banks. Fractional reserve banking is a banking system in which a bank retains only a part of the total deposits received from customers as available reserves to meet customers' withdrawal demands. The remainder of the total deposits is used for lending and investment. Multiple credit creation. Most bank-generated loans are later redeposited into different banks, creating additional credit. Money multiplier MM is defined as ratio of the money stock to high powered money stock. It is a measure of the maximum amount of commercial bank money that can be created with a given unit of central bank money. Together, reserve ratio R and currency deposit ratio K determine the money multiplier. It is expressed as MM 1 plus K divided by R plus K. For example, if K is 0 0.40 and R is 0 0.20, MM equals 1 plus 0 0.40 divided by 0 0.20 plus 0 0.40 equals 2.33. The smaller the ratio, the higher is the value of the money multiplier. Change in total money supply is expressed as H into MM. For example, if H is rupees 10,000 billion and MM is 2.5, total money supply will equal 10,000 into 2.5 equals 25,000 billion. Other factors include community's choice to hold currency in relation to deposits in commercial banks, money circulation velocity, interest rate, monetary policy, qualitative and quantitative measures used by the central bank to control money supply, and the fiscal policy which influences money supply via changes in public expenditure and taxation. The last part of this video is on velocity of circulation of money. Velocity of circulation of money is the number of times a unit of money is circulated in a given period or year. It can be classified as transaction velocity and income velocity. Transaction velocity is the ratio of annual transaction volume to money stock. It is the speed with which a unit of money moves around the circle of payments from income to payments for goods and services and back again to income. For example, if the total supply of currency and demand deposits M1 is Rs 5000 crores and transactions worth Rs 1 lakh crores are conducted, transaction velocity is 20, that is, money supply of INR1 performs the function of Rs 20. Factors determining transaction velocity are Increase in production and trade volumes results in increase in transaction velocity. Increase in institutional arrangements, that is deferred payments or credit systems, leads to decrease in transaction velocity. Increase in savings leads to decrease in transaction velocity. Increase in inflation results in increase in transaction velocity. And increase in intervals between income receipts leads to decrease in transaction velocity. 
Income velocity is defined as the average number of times a unit of money is used to pay for final goods and services. It is expressed as the ratio of GNP to money stock. For example, if the GNP is rupees 50,000 crores and M1 is rupees 10,000 crores, then the income velocity of money is equal to 50,000 divided by 10,000, which equals to 5. Income velocity is always lower than transaction velocity because the former is confined to final goods and services only. Transactions involving financial assets and the sale of existing land and buildings are excluded from income velocity. Factors determining income velocity are Increase in GNP growth results in increase in income velocity. Increase in demand for idle cash leads to decrease in income velocity. Increase in money supply quantity results in decrease in income velocity. Thank you.